Which brings us to basically the announcement of the release of the Delta V SIS configurator. And we're very excited about that. What we've done is we've taken that conceptual design that we've documented in the silver tool and we've created a, a tool, a utility basically, that translates that into logic that can be imported into a Delta V Sys configurator. How does that look like? In the silver tool, you document your conceptual design. For each safety and cement function, you document the inputs, the outputs, the voting, and so on. And with that, you basically dictate what you need to program in your application program. And the utility, with a click of a button, can generate that safety logic. You can verify that safety logic with the cause and effect matrix that we can also generate, but you don't really need that. You can automatically generate the logic from, uh, from, this, uh, from the Excellentia software. So that's the concept. Well, let's look at it in a little bit more detail. I have a very simple safety and cement function here. It consists of a voting arrangement here, two out of three transmitters, a single ESD push button uh, that go into a logic solver that drive two outputs. And we can see how this logic directly relates to what we can do in Delta VSIS on the configuration of Delta VSIS. We see, for example, an analog voter block here with three inputs. That's my two out of three voting. We see a single uh, discrete input uh, that goes directly into the uh, Delta V uh, SIS uh, CEM block. So both of these go into the CEM block. The CEM block can be configured to, in this case, trip if either one indicates a trip. It's a one out of two vote between the groups. And then it drives two outputs. So it's very straightforward on how this configuration relates to the logic that we generate in Delta VSIS. A little bit more detail. Let's look at some configuration options for the sensors. We have a high trip or low trip selection. So you indicate if this, you know, if, you, if your trip point is above or below your actual uh, typical process value. And based on that, we're specifying that we're going to trip if the value, process value, is greater than my trip limit. Trip limit in this case defined in Excellentia. The range 0 to 30 bar defined in Excellentia shows up directly here. Now we saw it was a 2 out of 3 voter, so the number of trip, number to trip is 2. Of the 3 inputs, I need 2 to tell me that I need to go to the safe state. All that can be automatically configured in this voter block. There's no manual inter interaction needed. There's many parameters that we specify in our conceptual design that we need to know to implement application logic. On the sensor end, we have the number of inputs. We have the voting between those inputs. We have the high trip versus low trip selection, you know, a greater than or, or less than uh, indication of our process value compared to a trip point. Out of range detection, are we going to be able to detect signals that are out of range? Most transmitters have a 3.6 or 3.75 lower end and a 21.5 upper end uh, to indicate there's a transmitter fault. What are we going to do if we detect one of those faults? Are we going to consider that an automatic vote for trip? Are we going to bypass? Uh, what are we going to do? A trip delay. So if I have a vote for trip, I'm going to wait until I see if this signal will actually go out of range and be an unhealthy transmitter signal. All that is stuff that we configure in our conceptual design and that will impact how we need to implement our logic. The tags, the ranges, the trip points, and then obviously the units of measure. On the final element, we need to know how many outputs we're driving, what the tags are of those outputs. We don't really look at the voting because the voting is a result as to how the valves, if it's valves, how they are piped in the field. If they're closing on trip, two valves in series, it's a one out of two. If, uh, if they're in parallel, closing on trip, it's a two out of two. In either case, the logic solver is going to drive two valves. So the voting is not something that we're importing here because you know, we don't really care about it in the logic. That's, that's the field. Action, energize to trip or de-energize to trip. Uh, based on that, we may need to implement some different logic. And then there's some detailed design SRS requirements. How are we going to handle maintenance overrides? How are we going to handle bypasses? Do we need startup overrides? Let's say I have a low level trip, but before I can 
make the safety function active, I need to make sure that my level in the tank is above that low level trip. So I may need an override. What's the actual time delay on the, uh, if we have a delay uh, for trip? Reset functions and then auxiliary inputs and outputs. In SIL verification, when we define our safety and semantic function, we don't really care about auxiliary inputs and outputs. You know, we only care about those inputs and outputs that are important to detect the hazard and bring the process to a safe state. We exclude ex uh, auxiliary inputs and outputs from our SIL verification. But when I implement logic, I want to know what these additional inputs and outputs are. Uh, so we can specify that in the design SRS. I have a very simple Excellentia project here with a total of 13 safety and semantic functions. Um, not, nothing too exciting. And I've you know, configured all of this and I exported, converted this into Delta V SIS logic. And on the next slide here, we can see what that looks like in the Delta V environment. On the left hand side here, we see all the SIS modules that were defined based on my safety functions. And then here, in the control studio, we see the actual logic that was generated. Click of a button. It took me less than five minutes to generate this entire logic. To click on the button, to generate the, the configuration file and import it into a Delta V environment. Less than five minutes. Doesn't matter if it's one function, if it's 13 functions, or if it's 100 functions. It's the same amount of time needed to click a button, copy a file, import a file, and open it up. Five minutes to configure your entire logic solver. There are some benefits, obviously, to automatically uh, creating your logic. Consistency. Instead of having multiple uh, engineers working on implementing logic, it's, it's always consistent. It's the same approach to implementing that logic. It's uh, a fraction of the time. I talked about five minutes. I demoed this concept at a, at a trade show at the end of last year, and a gentleman come up to me and he said, oh, what you just did in five minutes took me six months. Just imagine how much shorter your project schedule is going to be. And many times when we look at projects, people start to implement the logic in the logic solver way before the upfront design is done, way before all the analysis is done, all the safety requirements are specified, way before the conceptual design is evaluated. The reason for that is project schedule. <clears throat> you get to the point where all that upfront work is completed and you have to go back and do rework because some of your original assumptions are no longer valid. You can wait until the last minute to generate your logic in this case. No rework, no potential for bugs, or incorrect specification. It will dramatically impact your project schedule and it will also ensure that you are compliant with the application software requirements that are set out in IEC 615.11.2016. We're very excited about this new functionality and we're announcing today that it is available for pre-order. If you're interested, contact, it, contact us directly or contact your local Excel representative. It is a plugin to Excellentia Ultimate, so you'll need to have an Excellentia Ultimate license, and we're gonna be shipping no later than June 30th. We're very excited about this. We're running it on a couple of beta projects. The, the results are amazing. Um, so you wanna check this out.